130 laps to go, and the Pontiac Excitement 400 has lived up to its name. Nine caution flags so far. And don't forget, right after today's race on FX, special extended post-race coverage for you on Speed Channel. Right after we go off the air, we can switch over to Speed for more interviews and race analysis. Then Monday night at 7 Eastern, 9 Pacific, Michael Waltrip, Johnny Benson, Kenny Schrader relive the weekend on NASCAR Inside Winston Cup with Alan Bestwick. To get Speed Channel, call 888-22-SPEED. Kenny Schrader and Mark Martin battling now for eighth place. Yeah, that's it. Get that rhythm back. Let's stay right there. Look at the up and down day of Matt Kenzer. He's battling Ricky Craven here now for 13th. And just remember, we st restarted this race today at lap 66. He was sitting on pit road going two laps down before he even got the green flag. And, folks, this is why when a guy's up there racing that leader and you say, why does he keep doing that? This is why he keeps doing that. To get back on the lead lap, get back in the race, and he's going to salvage some pretty good day here. Let's have a look back through this field from Jimmy Spencer, the race leader. Eight tenths of a second back. We'll find Ricky Rudd, the second place car, whose lap times are right identical to Spencer on the watch within a hundredth of a second right now. As we've kind of gotten into a cruise control phase of this race. Ryan Newman has been the leading rookie in this race all day. He's third, but he's 4.7 seconds and a bunch of lap cars behind Spencer. 15th place, Jeff Burton, Joe Nemechek, Terry Labonte battling. You know, for 275 laps, there's always been a battle somewhere on this racetrack. <laughs> we can find a battle. Right now, Rusty's got his hands full with a 77. That's a battle. <laughs> 21st place was Wallace and Blaney. That's, uh, I think that's Dale Jarrett's wounded car behind though there are several that look like that and that's I tell you, not Jarrett Sterling Marlin just keeps kind of inching his way up to the field too uh, Mike he's sitting there in seventh place and racing Tony Stewart and pretty hard right now yeah after his pit stop Darrell he was 22nd and now Sterling's up there fighting for sixth got a pretty good car see Kyle Petty going a lap down after that spin a while ago but he stayed on the lead lap but here he's gonna go a lap down Couple of lap cars, Compton, Newman, Earnhardt Jr. after a trip to the garage, and here's third place Ryan Newman. He's uh, 4.8 seconds off the lead. He's got a bunch of distance between him and the second place car and him and the fourth place car. Fourth and fifth. Five clear, all clear. Mentor, protege, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, fourth and fifth. You know, I got to think that if I was Jimmy Johnson, I'd say, you know, if I just run behind Jeff Gordon, I'm going to do okay. <laughs> and every now and then I might win one, or every now and then I might uh, get a chance to pass him. And here's the sixth place car, Darrell, Tony Stewart. Boy, he has used that thing up today. The right side has beat all the pieces on that thing. Now Sterling Marlin. There's Marlin in the picture. Silver, the Coors Light Dodge. And behind him, Mark Martin. The eighth place car. Mark seems to be a little bit better, uh, Larry, after they run a while. Which that's not unusual. That, that yeah. happens with his style and his setup a lot. Good day for uh, Jeremy Mayfield as well. He's in ninth place right on Martin's bumper. That's a good run for Jeremy. He's just been kind of hanging out right there on the outside of the top ten. Now he's sitting there in ninth position. And look who's climbed to 10th after being two laps down making repairs on pit road. Boy, Matt let me, Kenseth. Let me tell you, when you've come from two laps down, you are so pumped up. There's, no, there's a good chance this kid could win this race. Now 11th is Jeff Green. You know, a car that's in 12th, I, I don't think we'd give him a nod today, is, is Steve Grissom in this 44 car. He started back in uh, like the 29th position in the... Uh, uh, they came up here and tested. I talked to his brother-in-law slash crew chief, said they had a good test here, and he's been right there on the verge of the top ten all day long, stepping in this car just three races ago. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd has erased that eight-tenths of a second deficit. He's caught Jimmy Spencer. 
right now they're fixing to catch, start to catch the tail end of the pack, which uh, definitely makes a difference. As we talked about several times earlier, patience. That's where you really have to use it, working these lap cars. And cars that's trying to stay on the lead lap. Early in the race, Spencer radioed his crew, said he was guilty of overdriving the car. The car was fine. Whoa, now he's under pressure it, from Rudd. Whoa. I mean, right now, Ricky's so much better through the middle of the corner. Got underneath him, turn two. He's going to take the lead here going in lap three. You know what happened there? laps to go. He was looking back. He's looking back to see what was going on behind him, and I think he about lost it off of two over there. Rudd led 67 laps earlier here. Kind of surprised to reread the record book that he'd only won twice here. Uh, he, he could have won a half a dozen at this racetrack. Celebrates his birthday here in the race weekend in September, and he's from Chesapeake, so this has always been Ricky Rudd's home racetrack. Matt Kenseth on the comeback trail, past Jeff Green, and looking at Sterling Marlin there for ninth place. And you know, we talk about being two laps down, not giving up, but Daryl, what, what kind of frame of mind would that put you in to know, and I know we restarted at lap 66 today, but basically he's two laps down today before they even throw the green flag. Well, your attitude could be, just put it in the garage. You know, we're all messed up, we're two laps down, but he didn't have that attitude. He had that, I can still win this race attitude, and by golly, he's, he's putting on a great show here. I don't think we've said enough about where he's come from. Now Sterling's backing up. Jeremy Mayfield went past him and now Kenseth. Now Dale Jarrett who crashed heavily and got stuck in the mud in the front straightaway. He's back out after repairs and a lot of duct tape. That thing is ugly. He ain't got no alibi. He's just plain old ugly. Need some parts off the big brown truck. 110 laps to go. When they come back to the line, Ricky Rudd out in front at his home track, Richmond. Ricky Rudd is a driver whose season has seen quite a turnaround. In his first five races, his best finish was 12th at Darlington. But in his last five races, well, four out of five. Third at Bristol, fourth at Texas, seventh at Martinsville, 14th at Talladega, and third at California. We talk about this racetrack going for a half to a three-quarter mile. Back in 1988, the team that won that race with Davey Allison was at 28 car. Darrell, how about Ryan Newman? I'm he has now come you. up to second place. That car looks really, really good, and it seems like the longer they run, the better it gets. He's, uh, he's moving up through the field, challenging for second. Steve Burns is in Newman's pit. Mike with crew chief Matt Borland. Matt, what is Ryan saying about the car? Tell us about your strategy for the end of this race. Uh, he's pretty happy right now. The car feels pretty good to him. Uh, we're just going to pit here one more time and uh, probably take four tires and see how it goes at the end. Newman's car is doing something uh, really, uh, it's fun to drive when they'll do it. He is really getting back in the throttle in the middle of the corner. That's where he's really making a lot of time. Car is sticking to the bottom of the racetrack and he is jumping back in that throttle. Jeff. You know, Jeff Hammond, what we're looking at here, we're 100 laps to go. Most of the leaders, Ricky Rudd, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Spencer, all were on pit road at lap 216. That definitely makes it where they can do it on one stop. But one key could be when to make that stop. Hit early, get advantage of those four tires, but when you do that, you know what the downside is, the old caution flag. Yeah, you've really got to roll the dice right here. It puts a lot of pressure on the crew chief as well as the spotters to try to kind of like see what's going on with the rest of the race. you got a big pack. Hey, I want to stay out until they kind of split up and break up a little bit. If you're leading this race, you definitely would like to see a lot of guys pit before you do. So if the caution flag does come out, you get the advantage of putting these guys down a lap so you don't have to race them later on. All these things right now, hey, that's what them guys get paid the big bucks for is to make that good decision right here at the end. Hey, Jeff, and the other thing I'm telling you as a driver is don't bring me in the pit when somebody's in the pit box in front of me or behind me if it's going to be under green. Give me a clear shot at it. Exactly. You need to also look all the way up and down pit roads. You don't want to have to contend with anybody if you can have that happen. Let you know far enough in advance so you can pick a hole, get down. This is one of those racetracks we've seen earlier. If you back off too soon, you could get turned just trying to get down on pit road. A lot of time's got to be given to let these guys know what's happened. But this might be our last stop. We can't have any mistakes. We can't have any lug nuts fall off. Driver, you can't speed on pit road coming in or leaving. It'll end our day. Don't beat yourself, guys. That's the main thing. Don't beat yourself. <laughs> 